you know, and it's cool because we still here. We still doing it. Thank God. It, especially, like, do, did you have to switch, like, your performance techniques when you're on stage? Or is there anything different about you? No. At so, all? Nothing. Because I, I, I saw Snoop, uh, I think, somewhere in Europe, and he just, like, his classics are so crazy. He could stand still and still dominate a crowd. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, uh, the songs are powerful, and they hold a lot of weight. And, you know, each year they just get more popular. You know what I'm saying? Because... People uh, go back to him with the movie straight out of Compton. It just opened up a wave of mm. different fans. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool. Especially uh, you sold 10 million solo. Aren't you happy that you got ripped off in the industry to go solo? <laughs> hey, man, you know, it did teach me a quick lesson. So imagine if you didn't get ripped off and you weren't like – you know, on to yeah. your business. Yeah, you know, you never know, you know how far I would have went. You know what I'm saying? Or would I still be, you know, would I get lost in the sauce? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> That's some wild shit, man. Like, sometimes you need something bad to happen to uplift yourself to get it popping, man. Like, For sure. You mm. know, you always got to, you know, look on the bright side when something bad happens. You got to look at what's good in this. And it's hard to see sometimes because you're mad. Sometimes you're frustrated, upset, mm. and it's hard to see the good out of this. And sometimes God take people out your life that's not supposed to be on the journey. Man, you know what I'm saying? He just plucks them out. And you have nothing to do with it. You have nothing to do with it. He just says, this person right here can't go. Wow. That's and some serious they're shit. out your life. And you're tripping like, what happened, man? Me and dude was cool. Or this deal fell through at the last minute. Why? This, that, and the other. And you look up and you realize sometimes that was the best thing that ever happened. Man. And being immortal now, like, you got a star. Without a doubt. Man. I mean, until the big earthquake come and it's gone. <laughs> it cracked the shit <laughs> out of it. It's, uh, it's there for longer than me. I mean, you've done a lot of incredible stuff, but it, is that, like, one of your, like, bucket lists? And, Without a doubt. Man. I mean, I don't even know if you can put that on the bucket list. It's just mm. when, when like, Hall of Fame, mm. Walk of Fame, any of that happens, it's, like, powers me on your control because I don't think nobody get in the game saying, man, I know I get on this mic because I need a star on the Walk of Fame. Man. <laughs> Just let me rap tonight, homie. You know, when you begging the MC, like, man. I need this star. So it's something you don't even shoot for. Mm. It's just you look up and, and you've done enough, and it happens. A lot of people, yeah. you know, when they go see these movies, you know, they're killing the Tupac movie because there's so many artists or whoever weren't on there. Yeah, but you you got a little backlash, a little bit. But the NBA yeah. movie was really like a great movie. Thank you. I mean, it's hard to do a biopic, dude. Like straight out of Compton, we're squeezing ten years. Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. like into <laughs> we squeezing like eighty eighty five to eighty I mean, ninety five to ninety. I mean eighty five to ninety five. Like we're just squeezing that into two and a half hours. So ten years into two and a half hours. And you can imagine something is going to get left out. And then the edits must have been crazy. Like, you were like, damn, we got to cut this out. Yeah. Fuck. Exactly. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want a four hour movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't want to hold people hostage with a good movie. So it's tricky. You know, you got to, it's, it's like a groove. It's like a record to me. You got to know when to end it, know when to, you know, bring the people up, know when to crescendo with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just got to know how to lay it out. So the people can can accept it. And sometimes you can get off to a bad start and it just mess up the whole movie. Yeah, you yeah. know, that, that's what I think happened to to that James Brown movie. It wasn't a bad movie. Mm -hmm. it, to me, it just got off to a bad start and it couldn't recover. And that sometimes that's ha that, that happens. Tupac thing. I know they're comparing NWA with it. I know you probably. I haven't seen Tupac. Part. I haven't seen oh, the Tupac see it, movie yeah. yet. But they're like fucking ramming it up the ass. Like golly. Yeah, man, it's hard, dude. You know, and you know when we was doing NWA, our measuring stick was Ray. You mm. know, the movie Ray, because oh, we wow. felt like holy shit that was done right mm. and it was accepted right, and everything in that movie was was perfect for Ray. 
So we felt like we needed to achieve the same thing, but for hip hop and for Straight Outta Compton. It's exciting, but the championship is what in Vegas. It's in Vegas on the same day as the McGregor Mayweather yeah, same fight. Day. So what's but going on? But it's earlier with that? in the day, oh, okay. so it's cool. So we at one o'clock. They at six. Right now, it's double book in the same arena. <laughs> What? Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's double book. Holy shit. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm gonna be there too. So I could go. Oh, to you your, gotta come through. Go to your joint and hang with yeah. Floyd right now. Yeah. But I think we're gonna work it out. I think we're gonna I think they're gonna do the right thing. How'd you look up with Mar uh, Roger Mason? Y'all been friends for years? I, I met Roger Mason a few years ago with uh my man Jeff Quantin, oh, who's okay. another co founder. He's also my business partner manager he made it easier to like yeah he just professionalized the whole thing yeah you know we wanted credibility from the yeah from the actual players so we didn't want to just start a league like with the whole these music <laughs> yeah these music dudes doing this basketball now yeah, yeah. you know so we we needed to get people who were you know qualified and knew how to put on a professional basketball game and roger mason he was the number two over at the players association oh, so right. He was already in with the players, with the league, you know, and he's he was a great, you know, him leaving that job to become our commissioner lets you know how much he believed in it. That's amazing. And it's on Fox Sports, FS. Fo yeah, FS1. Awesome. Monday nights, though. So Monday mm. nights, we introduce a Monday night basketball, and it's uh, – 8 p.m. to 11 Eastern. Wow! And it's Prime gonna time. be it's gonna be the shit. I mean, uh -huh. what what better Man. thing to do in the summer on a Monday night? Chill, basketball, but chill and watch. You know, ex pros who are now going at three it. on three pros mm -hmm. going at it. Sharp elbows, trash talking, mm -hmm. hand checking. <laughs> how much? How much it costs to be down on on, on the court side? A little bit of you know, it's, it's not. It, it ain't gonna kill you. Man. It's less than an NBA you know, game. You know I'm saying I'm gonna have to move some rocks. Yeah, yeah man, move a couple <laughs> things, man. Okay. You know, uh, we love to have you out there. I think yeah. Sunday it's gonna be the place to be. You like explain the N word the right way, man. Like we really own that fucking word, man. Like, it's ours, man. You yeah, can't that's have crazy. It back. You said it like the best out of everybody that's been trying to explain it for like. I mean, I just wanted to be like crystal clear because yeah. I felt like I was talking to all the Bill Mars out there, not yeah. just the one that was sitting next to me, but all the guys who, like I said, got a few black friends, think it's cool, mm. think they can get away with get it. The past, and shit. yeah, you know. So I just wanted to to be crystal clear on on you know that that the word is like a knife. You know what I'm saying. Mm. And, you know, you can cut your food up with a knife, use it as a tool, mm. or you can cut people up with it and use it as a weapon. And they've used it as a weapon too long to be able to be in the kitchen with the knives now. You know what I'm saying? So mm. you can't use it no more. You got to put it down. He looked like he was really, like, fucked up from dealing with that joke. You know? Yeah, I think he learned a lesson. Okay. I think he learned a big lesson on it's never cool to go there mm. unless you just right. want trouble. And another real, real situation on Friday, uh, you, you shout out the budget. I've asked you a million times you've been up here. You finally got the budget. Is it, is yeah, we're working on, I mean, we haven't got the money. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> they haven't cut a check, but, 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 but they're moving in the right direction. Okay. They told us, man, just bring us a script, man, and let's do it. So that's what we're working on, just trying to make sure it's funny and up to date. And you, you blew up a lot of comedians. Any new comedians you're kidnapping for it, or are you bringing back I mean, the, the classic I think guys? It, I think it's some people out there that I wanna I don't wanna say their name just mm. in case they audition is whack. And they don't <laughs> get it. <laughs> uh but but uh for the most part, I'm always looking for new talent. I think that's the duty of somebody's trying to mm. you know what I mean, trying to entertain people. It, I think it's our duty to find new talent and give them a shot. Because that's what happened with me. Mm. You know, it's like Somebody gave me a shot. I was a new talent at one point. And even John Singleton giving me a shot in Boys in the Hood. Wow. Know, I wasn't no actor. Yeah. I was just, I was like you, who kid? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All I gave a damn about was <laughs> being on the radio. <laughs> and, of course, uh, the big thing with uh, this whole Dr. Dre tour thing I heard. They're, they're, they're trying to bring you guys back, like, the whole. I wish. The original team back, Snoop, you. Well, keep me informed, man. <laughs> He's always the first one to know. I mean, yeah, that's I, why he who kid. I was, I was, I was hanging with Jimmy Alvin, and I, I heard the yapping. I don't hey, know. man, you never know. But <laughs> they know I'm down. 
they know all it take for me is a phone call. Phone call, yeah. It don't take a whole lot of back and forth. I'll get back to you uh, when y'all want to do all that stuff mm. is out the window. All it take is Cube. You want to do up and smoke too? Uh, let's do it. Jay Z, any any um like I heard you, you guys got a joint thing popping off. Uh, you guys had secret talks on that. What's up with that? What? What is that? I mean, yo, these guys are good with them. You got trip. more. You got more information. You got. Shit. I don't even know how. <laughs> Me and Jay Z doing something together. Right, that's when? What that's what, he's getting into movies. You want? You, 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 you come I mean, together. I would love to to chop it up with him. I okay. think you know he's brilliant, and I know we could figure something out. You know, it's just you know. When you're in the boss lane, you just a self guided missile in a lot of oh, ways. Okay. Just moving. So I think, you know, at at some point, it's only right to get together and figure it out to see if we can work together. Man, that would be a good look, man. That's uh that's one of the last questions right there. And of course, uh any secrets you want to shout out for for the Illuminati before you get out of here? Anything we need to know? I don't know shit about them. <laughs> and they oh, better yeah. not come fucking with me. <laughs> They're gonna have problems. 